Hello everyone, this is Zachmus Prime, aka Zachmus Prime, here with another Transformers Legends third party review. And this is the end of the set, which you know what that means, we're going to do the thing with all of the things. And so, sweep, sweep, sweep. Yeah, let's just get into it. So we're going to just go through, transform all of these figures up into their combined mode, combine them, and then talk about features and options and all the jazz. So we're going to start where we started. So for this guy here, a little bit more of a complex uh, transformation than some of these other ones. First and foremost, you gotta come in and open this part up here helps to use a spedger and then come to the back and pull this up the you do need to disconnect the wings actually you can just take these and fold them all the way around to kind of just keep them out of the way entirely You do need to separate the legs to get this to work, so kind of bring that up and unpeg these gray panels here. You need to unpeg them from these holes right here. And then that will allow you to pull these out a little bit split the legs bring that up and around and then close it back down put these wings back into their position you want to fold this in I don't think it matters which side this folds onto or maybe it does does it fold the other way It appears to, but doesn't want to. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it'll fold either way. It's 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 ambidextrous. Oh, I tab these back together too soon. Because of course when you're folding this to, when you're putting this together for the robot mode, this all comes up and sits up here. But for the combined mode, I actually need to keep this back here. So I pulled that out for nothing. For nothing! So come up on this little double joint here, and then we're going to bring this up and over, tab that in. Come on. There we go. No, there we go. Yeah. Tab that in. Fold up these little fins and open this up in preparation for his next trick and then we're going to set this off to the side next we're going to bring in our next guy and it's going to be largely the same disconnect this disconnect this open up this panel right here bring this in and down Remember that this is going to slide in on top of that. There's a joint down here that would probably be beneficial to bend that so that this all kind of sits relatively flush. And then you're going to take these wings, fold them up. You need to unclamp them. Really, what you need to do is fold this part down. And then it'll end up like so. So for this other one, we're going to 
fold this around, close that up, and then bring it back into its home position. This panel is going to open up slightly here in preparation for its next trick. For these dudes, what we're going to do is we're going to bring up the front and the back nose parts. This will eventually, not yet, but it will fold, form the regular little uh, mini airplane look. We want to take these And really what you want to do, I found the best way to do this. So, of course, it extends out on this knee joint here, but then it also extends this little part here. You want to extend that part without extending the rest of it. I found that that's what works best. Maybe that's precisely what it says in the instructions, but I haven't read the instructions. that in, fold that in, keep these legs tabbed together. We want to open up this panel here, bring out this joint. You'll notice that it's got a tab here and a tab here. So we're going to bring that out and then tab that, close that back in. We're going to take this combiner joint, bring it around, and this is the right arm. So we're going to take this, bring this so that these corners, you'll see how it's got um, like uh, chamfered uh, edges on two sides and then squared edges on the other side. We want to take those, which this is going to be the forward of this arm. Also, I like to put this pin on the inside of the elbow just because cosmetically I think it looks better. And so this is the like basically combined part of this. Um, one thing that we can do is we can take this head and turn it around and then have it so that when we fold this up. How does this like to go? I know it likes to go somehow. Basically the idea is that when we have this folded up, this head is still going to be out of the way. I guess that's good enough there. We'll tuck this in underneath there and call it good. And I will bend that joint ever so slightly so I don't forget which side is which. Next we're going to do basically the same process with this one. Now for this tail fin here because it's all kind of this one tabs together tighter. There we go. We're going to disconnect these wings and then we want to slide just this part back and just this part back. There we go, to those click into place. Open up this panel here, bring out the elbow joint, tab that back in, rotate this. I am going to take these and fold them around on the outside to try and 
help forestall this guy from being a complete pain in the ass. We're going to take, bring out this combiner peg, rotate this so that the ears are, the corners are facing this way, and then do exactly what we did before and just kind of plug everything into place. That's how I did it. That's what, yeah, that, that's how I do it. I remember now. <laughs> I've transformed this like a half dozen times, and like every time I gotta like figure out that particular move. Yeah, if I do that same move on this one here. And that again hides his head super well. I'm sitting here doing this and I'm like, yeah, I thought I remembered his head hiding better than that, but you know, I don't know. <laughs> it's that loose that loose peg is still gonna be the bane of my existence. Alright. Last but not least, we're going to take this guy here and it's in a lot of ways, it's kind of going to go into robot mode, but not like quite. This whole part is going to fold up just like we had it before. So take this, fold this around, pull this nose cone around, disconnect these parts, flip them around, peg them in down here. We're going to take this, fold this around, and then... Tab that in, fold it around, slide this up, tap all that in. Make sure that this little peg is pulled out. And now we're going to unpeg this, untab this. Fold this all around, fold, fold, fold. Extend out this leg like we're going into robot mode. However, we will not be pulling out the foot. Again, we're gonna do this with the other side. Unpeg this, unpeg this, untab that. Open this section up, fold this around, fold that around, extend out the leg, close this up. There is a delicate balance to this section here because you want these to sit out a little bit. Otherwise, everything will not go together. But it's hard to be sure just how much to have that sit out. So we're actually going to play it by ear. These tabs are going to plug into um, one of these sets of holes down here. And we're just going to, to put that where it feels like it wants to go. So I know that's not terribly... But like with it all closed up in there, you're doing it all by feel anyhow. So you do want to make sure that the legs come up past this part here. And before we tab these together, you've got these little divots on the inside of the legs there. So we're going to line this up, line those up. Plug it into those divots. Ta-da! And then we're going to basically maneuver this so that these tabs here fit into those slots there. And then these holes here are going to fit in these, sorry, these pegs are going to fit into those holes. So what that is going to end up doing is pulling out So you've got this little gap right here. And with that gap in place, then we can take the arm
rotate it around like so. And bring it up. Actually, I'm going to take this and tab that arm into its full open position and then plug, like shove this guy all the way in. Now, once you shove that fist all the way in, it is going to be kind of a pain in the butt to transform back out. The way you'll take care of that is by straightening the arm and then collapsing it all the way in and that will shove the end of the hand out and then you can just grab that hand and pull it to where it was before. So, again, click that till it, you know, pull that out till it clicks, shove that hand all the way in, fold this, this tab is going to plug into that slot, like so. And we'll do the same for the other side. Rotate that, fold this up, shove the hand in. Bring this up on its double hinge system. Tap that into place. And we are ready to combine. First and foremost, we're going to take this guy here. These tabs here are going to slide into these grooves here. It's going to slide all the way in. And then this is going to come up and there is this little, basically this little block here that this part is going to tab around. So bring that up, fold that up, and now that's locked into place. Do the same with the other side. Maybe a little bit better to see since all this is white. Slide that into the grooves. Plug that into place. And there you have that. We're going to take our combiner torso, open this up. This little T peg is going to fit into a T slot here. And then these are going to tab into the outside of the arms, the shoulders. That's where that is. This is all going to squeeze together. And there's a flip. Connect up this other one just the same way. up flip this around you do need to make sure that the head is tilted forward on this little tab here there are two tabs here those are going to slide right into these oh, bring us forward these two tabs are going to slide right into these gaps here that's why you need the gaps You'll know you're, you'll know that you're properly homed in when basically these things are going to come all the way up to the front of that gap. There are little pegs here that will plug into these little holes here, but I mean, that's not, that's not the part that's securing everything all together, really. Oops. Once that's in. You're just going to close up this panel here and drop his head, because why not? For the arms, last but not least, what you want to do is you want to split these legs for just a moment. Take the fist, slide it into those gaps, and then squeeze it back together. I need to do something about that wing. The shoulder is going to slide into this slot right here. And then this peg is going to cover that from the back. Did 
Do they sit higher up? I kind of feel like they should sit higher up. No, they would sit lower. Hmm. And then we're going to do the same with this other arm here. So slide this open, plug in the hand, sorry, hand, close that up. This is going to slide into that peg and then we're going to close that up. And here we have Superatron in his combined mode and I tell you what man this figure looks just as good as the uh, as the original large like masterpiece scale Superatron did it just it looks really good I have it in its toy configuration. Oh, well, for, his, for his gun, we can take this gun here, pull out that peg, open this. This one here, you'll fold in this little peg here, this big peg here. We'll raise this up a little bit. And then this is going to slot into that, and then we'll close that up. Till it clicks. Then you've got like a little peg right there. You can take the hand. There's a little slot in the palm of his hand. The peg goes into the slot. And there you've got his gun. Oh, you know what I just realized? I know what that peg is for. I mentioned the peg in this other review. I know what that's for. If you take this and fold this all back up, you can put that peg... No, 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 yeah... have the, the, the G1 cartoon style gun that's just attached onto his arm, you can do that. So, super dope for, you know, those of you who like that sort of thing. Um, also, if you are into that sort of thing, you can take and plug on this chest plate right here and then remove his head I don't really like the fit of that. We'll, we'll give him the old fist. So there you have him in this full like G1 looking mode. I personally prefer the toy aesthetic. Um, maybe that's because I have I'm more, you know, personally <laughs> like imprinted on the toy design than I was on the cartoon design. But that's just me. And that's pretty much it. Let's do a quick size comparison. Here he is with uh, the New Age 
Optimus Prime. A figure which I have not reviewed yet, but I will review soon, I hope, I think. Good combiner scale, I think. In terms of articulation, his head is on a ball joint. It will look up and down, a little bit of side to side. Rotates just fine. His shoulder will go all the way around. Come out on the full tree pose. On this the ratchet here, there's ratchets around this side too. This little panel here will probably come untabbed, so you'll need to be wary of that. He does have rotation above the elbow for like a bicep joint. He also has rotation below the elbow, plus rotation at the elbow. The elbow actually rotates both ways, but we're only going to we're going we're only going to bend it one way. About 90 degrees of bend. The wrist is basically on a ball joint. It'll go back and forward, rotate freely. You've got a ball joint at the base of the thumb, a hinge right above that, and a hinge mid-thumb. And then for the other four fingers, you've got a ball joint at the base of the finger, and then a hinge mid-finger. So... Full posability, basically. The waist goes back and forth on this hinge. Uh, put it back to his proper look. Without that chest plate in the way, it's actually less hindered at all. Plus, it's got an ab crunch. He's got skirt armors on the front, side, and rear, allowing his leg to kick forward that much, kick backwards that much, go out for the full Thor pose, freely rotates on this thigh swivel. You do have slightly more than 90 degrees bend on that knee. It is double jointed. If you bend this upper joint first, you can get a little bit of extra bend out of it. Um, you can also slide this whole thing forward to give you just a little bit of extra kick forward. So there it is. Actually, it's not giving me any extra kick forward, is it? Um, for the ankle, he does have the tilt that you would expect, plus... He's got forward and back motion, which is something that the larger figure did not have. Because this is a smaller figure, it's less heavy, less of a weight, and stability is much, much, much easier to manage on a smaller, lighter figure. And so you can put ankle tilts on the figure. If you tried to put ankle tilts on a large figure, it would probably, um, it would probably tip over like so. Or tip backwards. Either way, it would tip, and then you would cry because your expensive combiner broke. It's actually, by the way, if I can have a quick aside, that's actually the reason I personally think why uh, Fans Toys has never completed their Superion or um, Menasaur set, because uh, they're just going to be really, really, really freaking heavy. And... Uh, that's going to be too much of a of a of a fall hazard. Not not only hazard in that that thing is going to be a chihuahua killer, but also a hazard in that um, you will likely break many of your expensive fan toys figures if your fan toys combiner topples. This figure is light. It's stable. It's it's a pleasure to play with. And there are few combiners that I can say that about because most combiners, while I love the way they look and will make no secret of the fact that I think that they are excellent shelf toys, this is actually something that you can play with and not hate your life. It is not so large that it's just stupid to play with. And that's something that I really, really, 
really enjoy about the Legend Scale Combiners. They are fun to play with. And I can't say that about any other large combiners, any Masterpiece Scale large combiners. I love this figure. It is arguably better than the, uh, the Masterpiece Scale one for if only for the reason that you can like legitimately play with it and it's not you know heavy and obnoxious and a pain in the ass to do anything with by the way die cast in this panel here oh and he's got a little bit of a teapot which is great um this figure looks good all the way around as the Zeta Su Superatron always has. Um, but it's just it's just so nice. It's just so nice to pose and to play with and to do cool stuff with and to like have them fight other figures. And there it is with the, the New Age Devastator. You know, it's a, it's a good scale between these two. By the way, I hope to soon get an answer on when to get the new legs for these guys that have, like, the really hollow legs. Yeah, um... Uh, I I don't I don't know what else I can say. It's just this this um, Zeta Toys combiner is just really good all around. Also, I figured out what that little rubber strip is. You cut it in half and stick it on these little gaps here for some extra friction. Though, I mean the hips are tight enough that it'll stay however you need it placed. Like the friction on the feet isn't going to decide whether or not it's going to topple. Whereas I have had figures that I have had and messed with and reviewed combiners that you really do need good friction on the feet. Otherwise, they will just do the splits and fall over. Um, and in many ways, I feel that my last big combiner, which was the Radiotron, was one like that. Because that, that was a heavier than average Zeta Toys figure. But anyhow, thanks everybody for tuning in. You guys are fantastic. Everybody stay awesome and be good to each other. See ya. Bye.